let's start things off with RSL, who have been a bit busy this window, bringing in four players just in this uh, summer window. And that includes Diogo Gonchalves from Copenhagen. It includes Javain Brown from Vancouver. Lachlan Brook from Western Sydney. And Benji Michel from The Couch. All right, so let's start off with the big one. Diogo Gonchalves coming over from Copenhagen. Former Benfica player coming into the midfield. Three million fees what transfer market has listed for him. So a decent chunk of money, but nothing record-breaking. What are your thoughts? How does he fit into the team? How does he change things going forward for RSL? Yeah, I mean, listen, this is a team that needed that last game changer, right? I mean, they brought in Matt Crooks, and he's been okay, uh, but it really hasn't been that that difference maker, I think, that they were expecting him to be. Gonchalves as a natural central midfielder, but more in the attacking sense of of the word, is the guy that you're looking for. I mean, if you if you go back and you look at what he's done for Copenhagen, right? Europa League, Super League of Championships. I mean, tons of experience with Copenhagen. You mentioned Benfica. Benfica playing in the Champions League. Minimal minutes, of course, but that experience that we talk about in, in 2022, he had over 100 minutes in the Champions League. Big, big results in Liga Nos with Familia Gao. If you go all the way back to 2019, uh, 2020, his output isn't crazy, crazy for the Portuguese league, but he was he was fairly, fairly solid with the Copenhagen side where he put up 21 goals and eight assists in just 57 games across a whole bunch of different competitions and stuff. But I think RSL is kind of going with the attack by committee, if you will, like Whoever's the hot hand is going to play and whoever's making the difference is, is going to be that sort of player. He's very, very useful out on the wings, on the flanks as well. Very versatile player, something that RSL does a lot of, right? Matty Crooks was kind of the same way. He could play out wide, he could play inside. You've seen Chicho Arango playing off the off the line a little bit with uh, Anderson in front of him. I mean, there, there's they love to use players in various positions. And I, I think this is another person just kind of in the tool belt and something that you can see them trying to build towards as a very fluid attacking group, a, a group that, as we know, is already a very strong attacking group, you know, leading the Western conference in, in goals with 51, I think leading everybody who's not Miami with 51 goals. So it is just another, another feather in the cap for a team that is trying to push for the top of the table. They are five points out with a game in hand on the galaxy uh, but they are three points behind LFC who have two games in hand. So it will be a little bit of a different push for them. But I like it. I like the I like the ambition, you know, whether or not it is going to work or, or what have you. I like the ambition. Yeah, I would agree. I like the move as well. I think it's in a position of need for them. Whose court has them running a 4-2-3-1? And obviously our cell fans can tell us if they're actually running something different. But in that 4-2-3-1, they are running with Ojeda and Anelli, I think, most often in the, the deeper midfield spots. And then Matt Crooks, more, most often in the number 10 spot. And again, RSL fans can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe he's doing the small things well, but Crooks is rated pretty poorly. And I think that's probably because he's just not contributing to a lot of goals right now. He's got five goal contributions in 1,400 minutes. That's just not really good enough for me, number 10. And I think Gonchalves... Not necessarily being an out-and-out number 10 can suit that role a bit more. Or he can give you a little bit more attacking help from somewhere in the midfield as well if he's playing a bit deeper in, in one of the roles of Anelli or Ojeda. So I think it's a move in the right direction to, to look to solve a problem that they're currently experiencing because every like around them in the attack, around Matt Crooks in the attack, has been lethal. I mean, uh, Gomez has been unbelievably good. Chicharanjo is MVP level this season. Diego Luna has been, I would say, quietly good just because I think the only reason I say quietly is because Gomez and Aranjo have been so explosive this year. But Luna has 13 goal contributions in 1,700 minutes, which is really solid return as well. So if you can kind of figure out that number 10 spot, that should be one of the best attacks in the league. Like almost no defense in this league will be able to stop that if they're on their, on their game. You could ask the question though, like, 
should this have been the number one priority? And and maybe that leads us into some of the other players that they have brought in. Um, so why don't we kind of head in that direction with Javane Brown? You know, RSL have had some defensive issues this year in terms of availability and just defensively in general. So they've brought in Javane Brown here from Vancouver on a free. Does this help them in defensive depth? Does it improve their defense? Or is he just kind of going to be a body to soak up minutes? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really weird move in general for Vancouver, a team that Brown was really, really solid with. The idea with him at Vancouver was to use him as kind of like a right center back in this 3-5-2 instead of the, the right wing back that they, you know, he probably would have fit a little bit better in. They brought in another younger right back at 20 years old, probably to fill that role. But he was they weren't getting the most out of Brown. And I think he kind of, from what I remember, he was kind of pushing his way his way out a little bit, saying, like, if you're not going to play me where I want to play, send me somewhere that will. Uh, and that was RSL, who now has picked up a very strong, serviceable MLS level right back for the cost of a salary, right? They were relatively low as well. You had Bode Hidalgo, who has been fluxed around a lot at 22 years old. Emeka Anelli was kind of playing out there every once in a while. They needed somebody, I think, who was more of a lockdown. I can play here every week in, week out. I mean, Andrew Brody was out there for a little bit. I don't know if he, you know, he wasn't really holding it down as well as he probably should have. Um, this is putting JV and Brown in a spot to say, come in, earn the spot, and help us make that push. Bless you, Grace. <laughs> You know they. You're so, right. They, they they weren't as strong as you, you'd maybe like them to be defensively. I mean, not terrible by any stretch of the imagination, right? Um, but you're looking to chase down teams like LAFC who've only conceded 30 goals. You're looking to hold off teams like Houston and Seattle who are at 30 and 29. You know, any little bit that can get you that strength going forward in the last couple of games is going to help you. And I think he also gives you more going forward than. Uh, any of the others did as well. So if you want to get him involved in the attack, he can give you some of that as well. I personally would like to see him play in the right back spot. And again, RSL fans, please feel free to correct this, but who scored has Brody as playing the most at, at right back, mm -hmm. who's obviously not a, a natural right back. He, he's a left back being played at the right back spot. So I think Jabane Brown could be an option there if they want to actually have a, a natural right back in that position. I don't personally like Javane Brown as a center back in a two center back formation. I think it's good if they wanted to experiment with going with three center backs. I think he could be a good option there considering he has experience with it already. But in a two center back formation, I, I am not a huge fan of that. I think that could open RSL up a bit to a, to a bit more of defensive problems. His, his FB ref numbers defensively at the center backs, like compared to other center backs is pretty poor. So I think he'd be better as a right back because he compared to other center backs, he's very good on the ball. He's very good with passing, which to me just feels like it's a good spot for him at the outside back spot where he can. He doesn't have to be as locked down defensively, but can add a bit more to the attack. But still, I mean, it's good to add more people, especially with Javane Brown. He's very experienced in the league. So I think I can't see it being a bad thing. I can only see it being a good thing, but. I, I think the right way to use him is at the, out, the outside back spot. Yeah, 100%. Couldn't agree more. All right. So then the last two we've got here for RSL, and I'm going to group them together because they're both on the wings. We've got Lachlan Brook from Western Sydney, as we talked about before, and Benji Michelle coming over as a free agent. So what are your thoughts on their impact? I would assume considering how good they've been in the attack, Probably not going to see a lot of starter minutes, but what kind of a bench impact do you see these guys having, if any at all? Or do you think that these are more moves for the future? No, and, and I, I, I mentioned it earlier, right? It's part of this idea that I think they're going to go with where they are going with committee, right? You're, you've got a lot of games in a, in a short amount of time, and you are going to need as many hands on deck as you can to keep up with the LAs, the LAFCs of this conference. So... Benji Michelle, I, I love. I, I, you know, I've always liked Benji Michelle when he was when he was here with Orlando. Uh, then he moved on to 
Portugal and, you know, was there for a year or so. But I always thought Benji Michel brought a lot to MLS when he was here. I thought he was really, really solid. Not like a standout, oh, wow, this guy's going to be, you know, the next next big thing. But, I mean, he's got, you know, 19 goals, 13 assists for Orlando when in his time here. Like, he was serviceable enough where you can trust him as a wide player if you needed to rotate him in. So I, I really love that move. I, I've wanted to see him back in for a little bit just because I, I thought he brought enough where it warranted that. Uh, Lachlan Brook, an interesting move. I think, again, a something that we, we mentioned a little bit a, a couple episodes ago where there's this increased, re, I don't want to say reliance, but uh, increased an influx of inf- yeah, an influx of, of Australians coming in. I think this is like the fifth or sixth one just this this off season. Uh, experienced time in in England with Brentford and and Crew Alexandra on on some loans and stuff. But the move here is, is interesting. He was a he's a wide player. He got the top goal scorer I, I see here as a uh, top goal scorer in the Australian Cup. I believe it, it is. Yeah, Australian Cup. Uh, and nine goals and two assists in, in 1,300 minutes. It's one of those things where I think this more than Benji Michel is a long-term option, but it's a long-term option that they can trust right now, right? It, if they need to rotate somebody in and he can get up to speed quickly in terms of tactics and, and player movements and things like that, you can trust him to, to give you a, a decent shift with no problem. Uh, so, I think he's more of a long-term project than anything else, you know, anticipating maybe the Carlos Gomez's of the world may not be around much longer as they attract interest from other parts. But I don't think like it is a buy and stash. I think that he will give them again, another option out wide, maybe a little bit more than a Michael Chang would, for example. Yeah. I mean, it, it was definitely a position that they needed depth in. So I, I think bringing in Michelle and Brooke is a, good call and i would agree i i personally think the the benji michelle signing is is the stronger one here i think he has more instant impact he knows the league he's got experience in here and i think he could be a really good piece off the bench to kind of make a difference especially if they're making a playoff run just something to change things up add a little spark off the bench i'm not sure about i don't really know enough about brooke to be able to say if he can do the same but i think it's good depth to add for a guy that's coming off the best season of his career He's, he's in really good form, so I think it's a good call to bring him in. I do kind of I, – I, I would want to see what he could do long-term because while he is coming off a really good season, his numbers when he was with Crew Alexander, in League 2 were pretty poor. But again, I don't know where he, he was being played. Maybe he was being played out of position, but he had like 1,600 minutes and only three goals and zero assists, which is not a good return for your winger. So I don't know how I feel yet about him as a long-term replacement, if that is the guy they want to bring in for Gomez, if, if Gomez moves on. But I think it's good moves to bring in to at least bolster for a playoff run. All right, so then let's just wrap it up. We'll wrap up RSL with, with the final question that we had talked about. With these moves, where do you see, or how do you see these moves shaping the direction for RSL? Are they pushing for top of the West? Are they pushing pushing to just make sure they stay in the playoffs? I mean, obviously they're not making moves to rebuild, but no, no, but this is, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear what this is, right? They're, they're trying to, they know they're in win now mode, right? I, I think Tommy scoops wrote a really good article about it. They know they're in win now mode. You need to strike while the iron's hot. When you've got players all at the same time, like Chicharanjo, like, Carlos Gomez, like Diego Luna, before they are on their way out, you need to capitalize on them being here. If that means you start dropping money to bring in those players right now to support them so that you can get the best chance that you have had since 2008, 9, 2009 to win MLS Cup, you do that. I I mean, I, I have no problem with it. And now it's just a matter of how quickly can they come together to push for that, that title. Because I, I, I'd really be shocked if they found a way to not make the playoffs this year. But once you're in there, it's a dice roll, right? So how can you put all of these pieces? You know, we talk about teams that will sign a whole bunch of players and then it takes them six months before they all recognize how to play with each other. How many additions are too many additions in, in that sort of mindset is something to watch. 
Yeah, I mean, I would agree with you. Obviously, I think they're in win now mode considering they're what's five points off the top of the West. So I think you obviously want to make that push to finish top of the West, get as many home games as you can get. And as you said, playoffs is kind of a crapshoot. I mean, I think RSL is in a really good spot to make the playoffs. It would be a very big collapse for them to not make it at this point. But when you're in the playoffs, who do you have available to you to make the difference and and just make that one play that's going to win you the game? And I think striking while the iron's hot is super important. I think Adranjo is obviously has the potential to move on from the team, but I think it's probably less likely considering his age. But Gomez and Luna could be out the door by this winter transfer window. So you got to take advantage while you got them and while they're in form. So I, I absolutely think the moves are in the right direction for them. We'll have to wait and see on how much of an impact they actually play for the team. I think Gonchalves is the one that has the most likely chance to have the biggest impact on the team for this season in particular. Yeah. 